and they're not going to see him except through us. The Lord is coming soon. Amen. Amen. Well, how do you know? Well, because the Bible says so. Well, everybody says that in every generation. You're right, they do. Paul was saying it back in his day, but I figure if he thought he was coming soon, we're sooner now than that soon. Right on that one. And so, I don't know how soon, but I do know that I want to be ready. I don't want to be like the five foolish virgins who took a nap and didn't, didn't do anything extra to be prepared. And then when the bridegroom showed up, they got left out because they started trying to get ready after he got there. And that's not going to be the time to get ready. This is the get ready session right now. be perfect but I love the Amplified Bible for many reasons but it amplifies the Greek language and helps people like me that are never going to go learn to read and write Greek I mean if you're kind of like that you probably won't ever be able to do that now, I know some preachers that can do that and they're just as smart as all get out but I'm there'd be no point in me studying because I couldn't get it it just wouldn't work for me you therefore must be perfect, growing <laughs> into complete maturity of godliness and mind and character. So, to be perfect means to be growing in godliness and Christ-likeness. I love that. How many of you want to grow? Of course you do. You wouldn't be here tonight. Amen? Yeah. Or whatever you came for, if you didn't want to grow, you probably would have left by now because I'm all about growing. All right? I have a... I have a huge heart for believers i love the lost i want to see the lost get saved we have lots of people saved through our ministry but i love believers and i don't believe that the moment that we're born again then god no longer has any interest in doing anything with us i was a miserable believer for a lot of years in my life amen and i'm glad that god cares about those of us that are saved and he sends people to work with us to help us have the life that Jesus died to give us. I want you to have the life that Jesus died in order for you to have. Paul said, <laughs> I'm determined to take hold of those things for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. Jesus died to take hold of us for a purpose, and we have to have the attitude, I'm going to take hold of that thing for which he has taken hold of me. I'm going to grow. Make the devil mad. Shout out, I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow. Sing. Son of Love the morning. Don't forget when you now in Philippians 3, uh, 12, Paul said, not that I have attained this ideal. I've not arrived. Is there anybody here that's arrived? No, but I'm on my way, baby. Anybody want to give arrival lessons? I've not arrived. <laughs> I make mistakes. <laughs> but I'm actually 
at the point where I'm really happy when God convicts me of wrongdoing in my life. I mean, I remember the day when I would get convicted of doing something wrong and it would always get me down. Oh God, how can anybody have that much wrong with them? Come on, don't get, don't get like that. When God shows you that, something, that you did something wrong, you should rejoice. Thank, thank God he doesn't leave us alone in our messes. The worst thing that could happen to any one of us is God would leave us alone. And chastisement is a sign of God's love. When God chastises us or when the Holy Spirit convicts us of wrongdoing, whether it's you shouldn't have said that, don't think like that, don't act like that, don't be selfish, don't be stingy, don't be bitter, don't be jealous. Whenever God convicts us of sin, we need to say thank you, God, for loving me enough to stay after me until I get this right. Amen. Paul said, I've not attained this ideal, nor have I already been made perfect. But I press on to lay hold of and to grasp and to make my own that for which Christ Jesus the Messiah has laid hold of me and made me his own. Ephesians 4.15 says that we are to grow up in every way and in all things into the truth. Let our lives lovingly express truth in all things. Speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, enfolded in love, let us grow up. <laughs> let us grow up in every way and in all things into him who is the head, Christ the Messiah. This is the truth. The word of God is the truth. We're going to talk a little bit in the morning about some of the nonsense floating around the earth today about, well, there is no, there's no definite truth, you know, there's, you know, relative truth, but no real truth. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I mean, truth just can't be a whole bunch of things depending on what everybody thinks it is. The very nature of truth means only one thing can be true. Amen. And I mean, who are we going to believe if we don't want to believe God? I mean, is there really anything better that you'd want to base your life on? You better be sure. No. Absolutely not. 1 Peter 2, I'm going to begin in verse 1. I'll tell you, i got a boatload of scriptures up here. So be done with every trace of wickedness. Not even a little teeny, teeny, tiny little bit. Be done with every trace of wickedness, depravity, malignity, and all like deceit and insincerity, yeah. pretense, hypocrisy, oh, and grudges, envy, jealousy. I'm telling you, jealousy gets in me once in a while. I got to, God, I'm not going to put up with this. I refuse to be jealous. I'm not going to want what somebody else has got. You've given me too much to be thankful. You got to fight the devil. You gotta fight the devil. He, I wish she I watched you like go this. all the way over there. Jimmy. The kingdom of God has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. <laughs> Amen. And get rid of all slander and evil speaking of every kind. Like newborn babies, you should crave, thirst for, earnestly desire the pure, unadulterated spiritual milk. That by it you may be nurtured and grow unto completed huh? salvation. I remember when the Lord told yeah. me one time, it's time for your Look mouth to be saved. Beautiful. Completed salvation has to reach your mouth, your mind. The way you dress, what you do with your money, who you hang out with, what you talk about, what you spend your money on, what kind of entertainment you have. Amen? Come on. Yeah, he said, you're saved, but you don't sound saved. Your mouth needs to get saved.
Could anybody else use a little salvation there? Yeah, my mouth needs to get saved. Oh, I got Jesus. all kinds of stuff on the resource table for that. Man. Woo. I got books. I got DVDs. I got CDs. <laughs> Grow. Verse 3. Since you've already tasted the goodness and the kindness of God. I kind of wish that verse 3 was first because I think that's really the intent here. What if we read it like this? Since you've already tasted the goodness and the kindness of God, now be done with every trace of wickedness, depravity, malignity, all deceit, insincerity, jealousy of every kind, and like newborn babes, crave the pure, unadulterated spiritual milk, which is the Word of God. Amen. How can we see the goodness of God and what He's done for us and not want to be better? Mm -hmm. Amen on I want to be better because I love Jesus. I don't have to try to be better every day so I'll go to heaven. My salvation is based on my faith. But if you have real faith, if faith is real, if we're truly born again, if God really lives in us, then we absolutely cannot stay the same. It is not possible to be born again and never change. Amen. It is just not possible. Are you behaving any better than you were last year? To be continued, riding with of faith. Of course. 